we worship God today? Yeah. Now, how many of y'all want me to worship Him today? How many people know that you call His name something to happen?
show. I walk in there, see my mom, the family members, we ain't having a good time. And my mom said, You talk to your brother. I said, No. He said, I tried to call him too. So I was doing the band show. We have a good time laughing and talking or whatever. My mom gets up, my phone rings. I was a son of a 
working for a minute. He's going to hit you. I'm going to tell you. We serve a great God. We're going to use the name of Jesus. That's not what I y'all. We don't have no reason to walk around in defeat. So when you begin to use that name of Jesus, the name you're saying right now, you better look for things to show. You want to things to shift in your life?
Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and in his court with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generations. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Every head bowed and all eyes closed. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be accepted in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, it's once again we call on your holy and divine name. We come, Master, not for shape, form, or fashion, nor an outside show to the world. But Lord, we come in the humblest and the sincerest manner that we know how. Giving you praise and thanks, Lord, for blessing our eyes to come over to see another day. Another day that you have made. Let us be glad and rejoice that you need. Father, we come thanking you for your love. Thanking you for your mercy. Thanking you for your grace. Because if it had not been for your love, your mercy, and your grace, Father God, where will we be? Father God, we want to thank you for the pain that you endured for us and the blood that you shed for us. Father God, no other friend would have done what you've done. You gave up your life that we might live and have life for abundance. Father God, we come asking for forgiveness of our many shortcomings. Because somewhere along the way on this journey, Father God, all have sinned and come short of the mark, which is your glory. But Father God, we place the sins that we ask forgiveness for and your feet, that they will be taken by you and cast into the sea of forgiveness well. Thank you for being a forgiving God. Thank you for being a Father that will never leave our forsaken church. Thank you for being a father that when so-called friends walk away and turn their back. Lord, you are still there, even through our disobedient time. When we were instructed to go right and we went left. Lord, you still didn't leave us. You kept on blessing us anyway. And that's the not the same thing. Father God, we ask that you remember the sick that are on their sick beds in the homes and in the hospitals.
let you know we love you because you first loved us. Even before we were born in our mother's womb, Father God, you loved us. And that's enough for everybody under the sound of my voice to say thank you, Lord, for loving me so well, Father God. Thank you for the deep valleys that you have brought us through. Thank you for the high mountains that you have brought us over. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, these blessings we ask in thy name. We name in thy name. We claim him in thy name. We speak him in thy name. But most of all, we hold on to our faith. We believe it. We receive it. And we count it down. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do ask it. Amen, amen, amen.
second chapter of Genesis. I'll be reading the first 17 verses. We're going to tell the story, then we're going to tell the story. Amen. Genesis 22, verses 1 to 17. If you have it on your Bible, amen. If not, you can look up at the monitors on either side. Behind me is up here. It says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and offer him there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell of thee. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey, I'll use that for lack of a better term, <laughs> and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Amen. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and he laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out unto him in the heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy, own, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of the son. And Abraham called this place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heaven the second time, and said, by myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens and in the sand which is upon the seashore, and they shall possess the gate of his enemies. Do me a favor, look at the person next to you and say, Neighbor, neighbor the pastor needs your prayers. Needs your prayers. Today's, sermon topic is, Today's sermon topic is Lessons, lessons from, a from a mountaintop experience. You may be seated. Lessons from a mountaintop experience. One thing I've learned in life is that you should never say no. If you live life and if you be honest with me in here today, you'll come to find that in life that we've done some things that we've said that we would never do. If I talk to anybody in here, I remember when we were growing up and mama would say, you don't need to date nobody that look like this or act like this. Amen, somebody? Amen. But listen, some of us have dated the very people that mama and dad have said not to do. Can I keep it real in here? Some of us have been with them people for 10 and 20 years. I'm not going to talk to them here, so I'll never hang out with people like that. Who were these people that have you back? The same people that you said you would never hang out with. Do I have a witness in the house today that can say that you should never say But the question now becomes, what happens when the very thing that you say that you would never do is the very thing that God is requiring of you? 
thought I'd lose them right there. What happens when you said you would never do certain things, but then God says, that's what I need from you. If I'm going to bless you, that's what I need from you. Y'all going to pray with me today? When we look at this text today, when we dive into the circumference of this curriculum, we see that there's a fellow named Abraham, and God is saying, listen, I need you to take your only son, watch this, your last son, and take him to where I've instructed you to go to offer him as a burnt offering. Amen. Any parents in here other than me? Can you imagine if God said, take your last son or daughter to the mountain and offer them as a burnt sacrifice? And I'm thinking to myself, Lord, I can't take my Gracie or my Gabriella up there because for one, both of them are scared of heights. How am I going to get them up there? Then, but you know, to ask me to kill my babies, to worship you, y'all listening to me? Tell somebody, I don't know about that. I'm glad that y'all said that. Because this is the stuff that God has been requiring of you that you've been saying that you don't know about that's keeping you from not being blessed. Have mercy, Lord. I know they don't want to go with me today, but it's all right. God said, I just need a tenth of your earnings and you'll be blessed. I don't know about that. I don't want to talk to me in here. It's all right. God said, I just want a little bit of your time. I just want to spend a little time with your family. I don't know about that. They, you know, they're not going to talk to me in here, Holy Ghost. So let's move on. So he, I was it. Abraham takes his son. Yeah. Say, gets the wood, gets the knife, gets everything he needs to make this three day journey. Everybody shot three days. Three days. Yeah. Come back to that in a minute. Says, on the third day, he looked up and saw where God told him to go. So they made it to the mountain. But watch this. He tells the two fellows that came with him, he says, Y'all stay here with this donkey. Me and my son, we get ready to go worship and then we don't come back. Now, that's not what the text said in the beginning. That's not initially what God told him. God said, go offer your son as a burnt offering. Y'all listen to me? Now, had he told the two fellows what he was getting ready to do, he would have sounded like a murderer and they would have talked him out of what God told him to do. Now, let me park the bus right quick because there's a lot of us in here that share information that God only wants us to have with other right. people. And then when you do it, they talk you out of it and you wind up not getting blessed. Y'all go pray with me today. God told him, take your son. See, some information that God has for you is just for you. It's all right that you want to take people with you. That's cool if you want to take Pookie and Ray and Ray, Ray, Ray and Ray with you. But every now and then when God gives you instructions, you got to dismiss some people right. so it's only for you. Right. Now listen to me then. Can I tell you also what he was doing? He was keeping his business between him and God. Yeah. It was still part of, I'm talking good. I know I am. Yeah. Sure. Because a lot of times people will look at your conduct and course of living and then begin to judge you about what you're doing, but that's only between you and God. Right. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yeah. People will count your money and then wonder why you're not paying your tithes and offering, or they will count your money and wonder how you're living like you're living. That's between you and God. Yeah. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do, God let you know. That's right. So it says, he takes him to the top of the mountain. Uh -huh. But I, I like this part. He says, he built an altar. Uh -huh. See, and what we believe is the altar is right here. Right here. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Right here. We bring all our burdens right here. We bring all our problems right here. Watch this. But what happens when you can't get here? Uh -huh. What happens when you get up planning to go to church, but then something happens. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use his testimony. See, he took this altar and took it in that hospital room. Y'all right. listening to me? Because there's going to come a time where you're not going to get to make it here, so you got to make you an altar wherever you are. Y'all listen to me? Y'all listen to me? Watch this. How many people believe that prayer works?
pay attention to what you show your kids. Right. Amen. Y'all listen to me? Because yeah. kids pick up on a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 My oldest baby, she knows when I'm upset. She knows. She knows my facial expression. Daddy, what's the matter? <laughs> Nothing, baby. No, Daddy, you mad. Yeah. <laughs> she knows. Yeah. And she still show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that she knows. Yeah. I say that because in the text, watch this. Isaac is paying attention to what's going on. Daddy, here I am, son. We got all this stuff here for the burnt sacrifice, but where's the lamb? Some of y'all just missed the whole subliminal message, right? We got the flame, we got the wood, you done built the altar, but where's the lamb? Watch this. The church has everything that it needs to succeed. But in some of these churches, the lamb is missing. All right, daddy. All right. Did y'all catch what I said? Yes. The lamb is missing. Yes. Your marriage is gone. You got everything to have a good marriage, good relationship. But the lamb is missing. All right, daddy. Y'all not going to talk to me. Yes. Yes. And if anybody knows that the lamb is missing, my suggestion is you better go find it. All right, daddy. All right. What I like about this story is... Abraham spoke out of faith and spoke of something that he didn't see. He said, son, God will provide the land. Yeah. Now let me ask somebody, is it anybody that's been going through a struggle and you couldn't see the end, but you knew that God was going to provide? Yeah. Let me testify to somebody in here that's on the fence about their faith and you just wave your hand and testify and just tell that person, listen, you might not see it right now. Hey. Listen, I see. 
say that you was going to do what God said you was going to do. But don't do it. So after he heard that, he looked up. Not only did he see, watch this, not only did he see uh, something else that he could run, it wasn't a lamb, but it was a ram. A ram is the bigger portion, which means that the better the offering, the better the blessing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So sometimes God will super exceed what you expect, so you can give him greater for him to give you greater. Thick letter. 
to. <laughs> now, we look for God to do stuff for Mercy. Sometimes he does it backwards. Uh-huh. Just when I open that letter, everything was backwards. It just had my name on the thing. But when I read the paper, I had to turn everything over. So you got this percentage for this. This percentage for that. This percentage for this. Totaling a certain lump sum that I would get a month for the rest of my life. Y'all, y'all, listen, okay, listen. God. Uh-huh. Here's, here's the shot. Uh-huh. Because I did that a year after I got out of service. It took them six months to get back to me. Not only did I get a blessing for the rest of my life, the next few days they sent me a check for more than what I expected. All right. Donate too. 
God is a healer. Because I couldn't holler like that a month ago. That's right. I didn't have this kind of energy. Uh -huh. I could preach for a whole other hour and I'm going to do a teaching today. But the doors of the church are open. Somebody shout three days. Three days. Three days. I think about these businesses that say we can have things to you in three business days. Uh -huh. But I serve a God that can save your life, turn your life around, who can bless you, and less than that. Yes. But the altar is open for anybody who seeks salvation today. I know I'm young, but I'm going to be old school. The preacher said it's getting late in the evening. Yeah. And John 9, Jesus said it's going to come a time where your king is coming, where you're not going to be able to do all the stuff that you're doing now. All right. The altar is open for everybody who wants to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And for any young person that wants to be saved, listen, remember what I just said. Don't let nobody stop you from getting your blessing. This applies to you too.
Yeah, I'm going to say it out loud. She's healed. She's healed. There you go. Because I need y'all to understand the same measure that you speak in is the measure that God is going to meet you with. So I need y'all to start saying it like it's happening.
first because they said when you came out, no, nah, come back, come back down here. Don't get finished, come back down here. Because the blessing, the blessing hadn't been spoken over you yet. But they, he wasn't moving like he, they wanted him to move, but he's doing better. We just thank God for progress and keep him in prayer. Um, I want to pray for my baby. She wasn't she feeling well last night. I've been up, my wife has been open up since like 2 o'clock this morning. She, left me. she gave us a little surprise, scared me a little bit. But we bless God that she's doing better. We just want to pray for her help. Um, anybody else who we go to God in prayer? Lewis family. Church family. Amen. Listen, so I'm going to say this in front of everybody. The Lord spoke into my spirit a couple of weeks ago, and He said, he told me to tell somebody that I hear bells ringing. I don't know who that's for, but we hear bells ringing. That means marriage bells. That means cancer-free bells. Happiness bells. I just hear bells ringing. And I believe that God can do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. We've seen him do it before. Amen. Like I said earlier, I know that he'll do it anyway. To our visitors that are in the house, we don't want to act up like this, but listen, here lately, we look, we just been on fire with God and showing out, showing up and just doing a lot of stuff. Let me say this and I'm gonna pray. Yesterday was a grand day of evangelism. I want to thank everybody who participated in the feeding of the community yesterday. Um those who drove the van, those who delivered plates. Apparently we ran out because I had a lot of people calling and asking for them, which is good. Um, I ran into a couple, a few couples in the supermarket yesterday. It was telling them about what we're doing down here. And I'm praying that they show up. That's my prayer. All I can do is tell them. All I can do is show you, show you and tell you what we're doing. But you got to show up to be a part of it. Amen. With that being said, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pause just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, you've been better to us than what we deserve. Yes. We should be dead, sleeping in our graves, but I thank you, God, that we are all still alive and we're doing well. We might have a few issues here and there, but Lord, we thank you that things could, they're not worse than what they are. So, Lord, you've heard all of the petitions from us. We ask that you work them out because only you would know how. For all the names that were called out loud and to oneself, you know the issues that each individual has, God. We ask that you work it out because we know that you can, we know that you're able, God. Yes. For the testimonies in the house, God, we thank you for doing good works, God. But don't let it stop with us. Continue to go through this church and do these things that you need to do, God, to make us a better people, to make us a better church. But we speak, we speak against the assignment of the enemy right now, God. We want you to cancel that assignment on this house and every individual in this house, God. And Lord, let the oil just flow from the pulpit to the back door, all the way to the sanctuary, all the way to the fellowship hall, God. But most importantly, God, just continue to bless us. Lord, for the one that came to the altar, who's turning it over to you, God. Let her know that she can take her hands completely off of it. Because you've got control over everything. Lord, touch the parts of her soul and her mind and her heart that have not been touched. And refill her, God, with your love. Let her know that it's all right to let things go. Because everything that we let go of, that we do, is not necessarily a loss. Bless the ministers on this roster, God. Bless the musicians of this church. Bless the officers of this church. Continue to bless the life of Christ church as a whole. We love you and we thank you today that everybody shout amen. 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 amen.